we were teaching at St. Joseph's School in South Troy. Listen, it's just going to speak into it. We were teaching. No, St. Joseph's School. No. When our bus pulled in from St. Joseph's, South Troy, Sister Verena would be missioned on the loading dock to direct us to one of the floors to wash windows. And every window has four panels, as you know, and a screen. Well, my companion on 5B was Sister Ann Gaffigan. And before we moved into this house, she used to have a siesta after school. <laughs> so after we finished a half a dozen windows, she dropped a screen from fifth floor. She looks at me and says, in her own way, so I jump after it. <laughs> at that point in our experience, if you got a phone call, you had to go to the superior, the person on the door had to go to the superior, get permission, and then tell the sister. Well, that got a little complicated here. <laughs> but there was one rule. If Sister Karina was at the TV watching a horse race, you didn't disturb her. <laughs> <laughs> and she was very concerned for the sister's health. She really cared about us. And she insisted, because we're doing all this work, that we should have enough food. And insisted that everybody had an egg for breakfast. And to make sure it was complied with, she checked the dining room. You had to have your shell to prove it. <laughs> well, Father Keith was in the dining room having breakfast with us. And he goes like this to the egg dish. And he takes his egg and eats it, and we have always enjoyed the spirit of camaraderie with which they kind of accepted whatever was going on at this house in the beginning. It was a wonderful spirit. I want to be nice and loud, but I'm not sure it's working. Ah, all right, okay. Um, I actually wasn't at the uh, St. Joseph's on the day we moved. Uh, I don't know who it was, but there were three of us that were brought up here to help the sisters uh, who were living here, uh, Athanasia and Mary Leo. Um, uh, Genevieve Greisler. Ann Gabriel was here. Uh, Evan Joseph was here just to help over the weekend, so uh, I was up here, but we all were waiting, you know, for the for the troops to arrive. Charlene had said that we would have a brown paper bag lunch, and all I could think of is, is she going to remember us that we don't have any brown paper bags, you know, because we were up here already. But absolutely, and the name was on it. We got a brown paper bag, and she promised. She said, you will have a hot meal for supper, and we did. How she did it, I'm not really too sure, but we did, uh, did do it. Um, I remember Sister Michael Francis, and this was one of the first days, and uh, she was uh, had, had a charge, and she was like standing in the dining room, and she was laughing. I said, Michael, what's so funny? And she says, well, I can't find the broom. I can't find the mop. And then she laughed again and she said, and now I can't find the charge. <laughs> um, the, I, you have to understand that everyone remembers these stories slightly differently. So this is the way I remember these stories. I was Lamise, went to Verena, and she said, my charge are the parlors on the A wing on the ground floor. Now, which ones do you mean? I, you know, like there's 23 of them down there. And Brina looked at her and said, yes. <laughs> I made, before I knew that Wolf Lamise had done this, I made the same mistake. 
I said, uh, I understand that my charge are the B wing stairs. Well, which ones? And she looked at me, and guess what she said? Yes. 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 Uh, it was that. I've got to tell you this one thing. I really have no uh, pitch. I have no ability to go up and down, you know, on the scales. And uh, I cannot sing. That's my, what I'm trying to say. And uh, Char Bloom, and there were like, I think Veronica Wall was another one. There were about five of us. And we went up into the choir loft. At that point, there was no floor in the choir loft. There was just like dirt there. That was all. And you could see the uh, probably the uh, mosaic was probably about one third put in. Because you remember that man came all the way from Italy to put it in. It took him like you know uh, a long time to get it in. And we were standing up there, and she said, "Let's sing." <laughs> so I was part of the original choir. <laughs> Provincial House. And that's the only time I ever sang up there either. Um, Veronica Wall was a great, great person. Really, she she was very imaginative. And I just remember she used to teach all of us. We were on the fifth floor, 5B, and she told all of us the same thing. If you want to go from one place in the Provincial House to another, this is what you must do. One, wear an apron. And two, hurry! <laughs> and everybody would figure you were on your way somewhere. Marina uh, was a great one for putting your name up and you were supposed to see her. And somebody, and I don't know who it was, maybe it was even somebody in this room right now. The person's name was there and after it, it had R period I period P. <laughs> was it you? Right. So everybody was was just wondering what was this? Rest in peace. And, you know, wondering like, like what was going to be. Now, tell us, Susan, what was it? It was her reminder that she wanted me to go to some wake. <laughs> um, they say that there was a series uh, that that there was a a video, and the video. Was the highlight of the video was Marina leaning out the window going like this, get away, get away, get away, leave, leave. And she didn't want her picture taken. In addition to that, uh, Patrick and I used to uh, put on little uh, performances in the dining room. And one of them was the sounds of the provincial house. And one of the sounds of the provincial house was Odd infinitum, and what was it? It was somebody walking down the corridor from the main hall all the way to the dining room. And the other thing was the egg rolling around in the dish. And Patrick claims that in addition to that, there also was a broken glass that she had to smash somewhere just to be sure that she got the right sound. Uh, it was a wonderful time, but it was a hectic time. And when, once the, the uh, bus came in, then you were like sent out like to do whatever it was that needed to be done. And finally, after about two months, we had never prayed five o'clock prayers because there was always so much to do. And Marina, in the morning, she said, we'll all go to five o'clock prayers. When the bus came in, there were chores to be done. And I don't know who it was, but I think it was Barry Curtin. Or it might have been Doreen Glenn. I don't know. But I just remember her being on, on her hands and knees in the uh, 1B corridor, <coughs> waxing the 1B corridor. And she kept saying over and over again, she promised. She said we could go to prayers today. <laughs> <laughs>